Yeah, so, okay, hello and welcome back to a new creative tutorial. This time we are going to talk about how to freeze things. I'm going to do this tutorial because somebody was asking for how we can do this and yeah, so here we go. So of course I'm using uh, the Blender Flip Fluids add-on because I'm in the development team and I love to work with it and I would also love you to use it and um, yeah, Freezing something is uh, really simple because we just need to animate the speed of the simulation. But there are also some tricks I would like to show you that helps you to make the thing look beautiful and maybe more realistic if you would like to say this. Okay, of course, what we need is a domain and some fluid. So um, I would say uh, the easiest way would be to click create domain object and then you have a domain. But what you can also do is, let's delete this, you can also start with a UV sphere that will be our drop and then add another object where the drop is going to fall into. So uh, this, and then you can say this is a fluid object and this is a fluid object. And now the cool thing, if you select both, you can click create domain and that will fit around your objects. Okay, so now we only need to uh, make that fit better in our scene. So um, I would say the fluid needs to be some bigger. It's okay if it comes uh, through the um, boundaries of the domain because our simulator will cut this away. Make it some deeper. Yes, and let's push everything to uh, the top of that right line here. So yeah, I would say this is great. And we have a basic setup here. So what we should do, of course, is we go to save the scene. Um, yeah, let's tell the, um, let's tell Blender to save it as drop freeze, dot blend or something like this. And when it has saved, we can, of course, start to bake the simulation. And if you would like to see, um, every baked frame automatically you can enable that checkbox here and then you can see what's going on here okay uh, i will continue this video when baking has been finished well great baking has not been finished but that's okay because we do not need the whole simulation to has been finished with baking so um, what we do here is we are simulating a basic simulation with a low resolution. You can always take a look to the right side and see what the resolution actually is. We have 65 here, what is okay for a preview because we need to know how the simulation maybe is going to look like. So let's play it back. Yes, and this is what we have here. Please notice that we are not uh, uh, having playback in real time here actually. So uh, when playing back a uh, rendered simulation or animation that might be some fa faster. What you can do is you can click to preview here. So uh, this will load preview frames here. They are not that beautiful, but it helps us to have uh, Yes, a faster playback. So you'll have a realistic feeling for what is going on later. Okay, so what we are doing now is we will find, um, yes, the time where we would like to, uh, the drop to freeze. And I think it's something uh, where the drop is um, creating that crone here. But you can also choose to freeze another frame range. It depends on what you would like to do. And what we like to do is, yes, we would like to reduce the speed animated. So let's say we would like the simulation to start freezing at this point. Yes. And then let's think about how long the freezing process will take uh, in seconds. I would say one second is too slow, uh, too fast. Uh, it would, be, would mean, uh, yes, the water becomes frozen in one second. That is really too fast. I would say three seconds would look great. So let's uh, calculate three frames from here. That means um, I have a frame rate of, let's see, I believe it was 25 frames per second. That means um, to add 75 frames on top of this. Um, and in this range, we need to uh, decrease the speed for the simulator. How can that be done? So while the domain is selected, take a look to the right side and find the speed slider, this one here. Uh, yeah, one means to have 100%, 
and of course zero means to have zero person speed so zero means that is the speed where everything looks like it is frozen and we can animate that slider here so at this frame we set a keyframe while holding the mouse here and press the i key this thing becomes yellow and yes i would say let's go to i think 100 is okay it's nearly three seconds and then drive this down to zero press i again yes and now we can rebake everything and see how this effect is looking like yes so and then then let's see what's going on here and we have this drop and then it freezes in yeah something like three seconds but i think that is looking beautiful let's take the uh, final display surface output here and let's see how it is looking with some more details yeah that's super i love it so the thing is we uh, did this with a resolution of 65 because this way we have the fastest workflow we can uh, check in what timeline in what time range or frame range our freezing process is required and when this is okay you can reset your bake again and then re-simulate at a higher resolution uh, for this tutorial i'm going just to 150 but i recommend to use something that is higher like 300 as example because the highest quality will look more beautiful when rendering it so let's hit bake and then i will come back okay so uh, maybe you took notice about that um, the simulation playback here is now faster this is because our simulator took notice about that the last frame is not moving or let's say it detects that we are at a speed value of zero and nothing is happening here and all what uh, the simulator would need to do now in theory is to duplicate the last frame because there's no movement okay so that means also we can press stop here uh, because we do not need to bake always the same frame okay and what we are going to do now is let's talk about some shaders things yes so uh, actually the thing is white and uh, i believe we are set on uh, ev what still will work but sometimes i love to work with cycles more so switch to gpu and cycles and uh, um, for a better lightning we need a background so i'm going to use the hdri maker Okay, voila so we have this year let's make this invisible for the camera so we have black background here yeah beautiful and now we will set up the water here make this transmission value one again and then when you play around with transmission roughness you will see that the water looks a bit more like it is frozen because there's more white inside so we need to match an animation of this transmission roughness values to our um, speed animation so that means at this frame the roughness should be zero so set a keyframe here by pressing one and at frame 100 you need another value something like oh dot four i think that will look beautiful yeah it's okay and then press i again yeah and that means in the animation the water becomes frozen it becomes slower and it becomes more rough and white inside and that is looking like it, it's really freezing yes and uh, for the second part of this video i would like to talk about how can we make a second simulation on top of that first simulation what means to have new water that is uh, yeah, flowing down to the ice surface here and maybe becomes ice too yes so as you maybe know actually that is not possible not directly what we can do is we can export that thing here that one frame as alembic and re-import or import that alembic in a new scene and then use this as obstacle for a new simulation and that is what i would like to show you now um yes 
One thing you should know or keep in your mind is if you are going to blend these two animations, it's required to have the same movement of the camera. So actually I have a static camera, there's no movement, but if you're going to yes, play this animation and freeze it and then you will have a new simulation and freeze it on top of the first simulation. While the camera is moving, you need exact the same movement of the camera for the new scene. So I recommend to make all the things finish so you have all your animations for all objects and then save everything in a new file where you are starting with a new simulation. Yes, and of course, I would recommend to use the same domain, but you can... Um, use it because we save this in a new blend file now but of course first thing is we go to the last baked frame this is 100 because this is where we set a keyframe for speed zero and we need to load the higher resolution mesh here reload frame and then we need to export this single frame as a lambic so i press f3 and type in alembic export and yeah, drop freeze ABC is a great file name for me. Uh, we need to tell this uh, exporter which frame rate should be exported. It's from 100 to 100, just this single frame and selected objects only. Make sure your fluid surface is selected. Otherwise you will export everything else and that is not required. And um, yes. We can disable this, but as there's no hair or particles, nothing will be exported as far as it now. So click export. Uh, sometimes it will take a while. That depends on how high your resolution was set, but this uh, time that works really fast. And now let's save this again and let's save this in a new file. Let's drop freeze. Let's say second scene. As example, save. And um, yeah, so what we need now to do is to import Alembic. Import Alembic. And then we have that drop freeze ABC file import and then we have it here. So uh, yeah, as we are going to make a new simulation, that would mean we have to clear the cache, but that would also mean that the cache of the first blend file is deleted. So what you can do is you can click match file name. This is a new operator. So you have a cache folder on your drive that matches your new file name. And of course this is empty actually. And then you will have no simulation in the background. Okay, so what you see here is not a simulation frame, it's the ABC file because we do not have a fluid surface actually because the cache is empty here. Okay, save the file. Uh, let's tell the simulator that this imported ABC file is an obstacle. So click obstacle and yeah, what you now can do, we can, we can use of course the same object here, or the same drop simulation like before, but I would like to move the drop a little bit more heat to this here and uh, because it falls into the same desk we do not need to change the animation settings here for speed we can keep them as they are and just click bake to see what's happening here so yeah if you like you can uh, first do it with a lower resolution okay let's do it with a lower resolution 65 and yeah here we go Of course, um, yeah, the more vortex your obstacle has, uh, the longer this can take. Oh, and as you can see now, something went wrong. Oh yeah, I forgot. We have uh, the fluid surface behind or inside our uh, imported Alembic cache. So here, this thing, this thing is uh, our fluids and we do not need this now because we would like the drop to yes to have contact with our imported model here so delete this one here okay and then bake again yes as told before um yes the higher the word account of your obstacle is 
uh, the longer exporting the obstacle will take and the slower simulation will work. Yes. Okay, but that is looking beautiful here. See are saying, and I think somewhere at this frames here. Yes, it becomes slower, and at frame 100, it should be it should be frozen completely. Very great. Yes, so we can stop now. This is how it works. So we have this here. Um, please notice that we are going to use the same shader. If you are going to render this here, you need to uh, use the same water material. Um, like used in the scene before, of course, because otherwise when blending the two animations, you will have some, um, yes, irritating things with the shaders. And you need to delete the keyframes here, or to delete the first keyframes here, because the roughness is required all the time here. And for the new fluid, we need to make a new material. So, actually, this is um, the same material like the imported ABC model. So when you click on this, you can uh, click on duplicate here. And we have exactly the same material here. And at 100, we have a keyframe here because we copied it with the material. And let's go back to 45 and that roughness zero, I, yes, and you will see the new fluid the new fluid is uh, not rough there's no roughness inside but the old is still frozen and when this is this coming down it freezes on the ground and becomes frozen too yeah very beautiful so we can re-simulate this now with a higher resolution and take a look how this is looking like. Okay, so finally, the last thing we should talk about is if something is frozen, can we break it? Yeah. Is it possible? It is. I'm going to make a new scene for this thing. Um, we need only some basic things like um, inflow object. Yes, let's use a water stream that it will freeze and then we will break it. Yeah. Good idea. So let's create a domain object. Ooh, yes. Makes this some bigger. Like this. And we are going to use an inflow object. And we need to save the file. And call it freeze to break. Yes, I'm creative, I know. Okay, so uh, for the tutorial, I think uh, the low resolution of 65 will be enough. So let's do it now and see how it is going to look like. And it stops there. Okay, great. So what we need to do is we need to bring this static model. So where, where the fluid is not moving, we need to bring this into the old fracture modifier build. And of course we need to export like before an alembic frame. So typing F3 alembic export, a single frame. I believe we are on 80. We can also use another one. Start 80 and 80 and only the selected object. And this one is called freeze to break ABC, which is still okay. Export Alembic. Okay, and now I'm switching to the Blender Fracture modifier build. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is uh, Blender 279. I know it's it's not ugly, but it's not that beautiful like the newest Blender versions. But uh, however, the only way to make a fracture simulation is to use this old fracture modifier build. And believe me, it's gold and it's gold. It's very great to work with this. It can natively work with textures and objects. And I believe there's no other software that can work together with Blender in that good way. 
Okay, so what we would like to do is we would like to import our Alembic file. Import Alembic. Let me find the place where it is. So here's our file. Import, and here we are. And um, the fracture modifier build, of course, has a great thing inside, and that is yes, a fracture button. So while only the imported fluid is selected, click that fracture button, and you can now click on execute fracture, and you will see our ice is breaking down. Wow, that's great. I would say let's delete all the other things. Ah, that's crazy. We need to use the right mouse button to select objects. <laughs> Oh yes, okay, it's okay, it's okay. So, and we need to save this file. Um, I recommend to use free to break and make us uh, ourselves remember that this is a 279 FM file. So when you are seeing it, you know this is a file that has to be opened in the fracture modifier build based on 279 and save the file uh, sometimes it might be depends on uh, how yes high the resolution of your model is that uh, blender will break crash yeah blender will crash and then it's okay it's good uh, to have it saved here um, something you should also notice is let's have a look to the wireframe uh, it's not a small wireframe because we uh, simulated with just 65 uh, resolution and the higher resolution you choose the more vertices you have and the longer fracturing as well as simulating the rigid bodies will take yeah okay but we can now try to use something like 50 execute fracture and we are still need to wait just a few seconds also i would say it's really fast looking like this yeah you can also use a lower value and then use an object like let's say oh, let's say a sphere place it anywhere inside or by side here and we can use this sphere to generate smaller pieces at exact this position so while this is selected hold shift and select uh, yes our fluids and then go to generate smaller shards and click the generate smaller shards button then, as you will see, in a few seconds, oh, come on. Yeah, that takes some uh, longer because that sphere will now generate a particle system with, I believe it are, there are 500 particles and each of this particle will be used to generate a smaller piece inside our frozen fluid object. And that takes a while okay so we have to wait till that has been finished here by the way you could uh, yeah it has been finished you can also uh, open here the system console to follow the process of uh, fracturing okay so you can see it as something like a progress bar <laughs> okay so let's remove the sphere object here to the side and um, while this is selected, you can disable wireframe here. And now let's play the animation. Yes, and you see you have smaller pieces, the point where the sphere is set. And what you can also do now is you can save, of course. <laughs> you can use this sphere and animate it. So let's say location at frame one. And I would say it will take one second to drive from this side to the other side. So that means 25 frames, move it here, I location, and then we can make this thing a rigid body, animated one, and we can say this is a trigger, and we can tell this thing is triggered. Uh, triggered means that that object will not break until a trigger object touches this. So play the animation, no, save, and then play the animation. Yes, but it was still moving. This is because when a trigger has been selected, you also need to check the animated checkbox. And then it is looking like this. And if you 
would not like to have that thing here to fly in the air you can use a trick we can use constraints and enable constraints and we can use clusters clusters will uh, yeah, let's say build aisles of different shards and you can tell the simulator how many of them you will have here so let's say one okay play back and then Okay, we need to set some rules here, an angle for the cluster, for the one cluster, an angle, something like this, and for the shards, something like 0.25%, save and play the animation, yes, but it's still in the air here, mm, I don't know why, how can I make this fall down? Mm. Okay, if this is not working, you could also um, use activate broken and then it is looking like this. Yeah, I think that is a great animation. Yeah, I like it. Let's try a higher value for clusters, cluster count here and yeah, this is how our breaking simulation is looking like. So yeah. Great. So what you need to do now is you need to export this as Alembic, but I recommend to bake this uh, cache into keyframes, uh, not into keyframes. We need to, let me show you, we need to uh, bake this into the cache. We need to bake the cache. Okay. So we need only 200 frames. So click on bake. It is really fast. And now this line here uh, became orange, what means um, now our simulation has been baked to the disk safe. And now we can uh, play back using the timeline as we like. And when that has been done, we can uh, export this <laughs> as Alembic again. So let's type in Alembic. Freeze to break. But uh, now we will freeze to break call it uh, fm animation as example and uh, we need start frame one and frame 200 and selected object only yes really important and then hit export alembic you can follow exporting here really fast here we are and then we can import we can import our simulation here. So Alembic import for this one. All right, it's still there, but we can delete it. Okay, <laughs> all right. So uh, now we have our flit simulation and we have our breaking simulation uh, on top of each. If you do not like to see, oh yeah, let me show you something. Uh, let me make the fluid surface invisible. If you would like not to see um, the shards here, you can select this thing and use um, edge split modifier and then your mesh looks perfectly. All right, so this is how you can export your frozen fluid uh, to fracture it and then import the fracture simulation back. What you need to do is you give this thing the same material like your fluid head. Or if there is nothing, you give it a new material. And then you can render it. And whenever you're going to use um, reflective materials, uh, we recommend to use an HDRI background because this way you will have beautiful reflections and beautiful lightning. Yes, and this way you can make a beautiful simulation. Okay, so this is all for now. Um, yeah, I hope you liked this tutorial. I would love to see some of your experiments. If you have questions or driving into issues, uh, please comment this video. I will try to help everybody who needs help. Thank you for watching and see you the next time. Goodbye.